How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy. And as you can see, we're back at it talking about the amazings of folks. We're back at it with our second video of the day. This time being a later night upload on the East Coast. But both videos had one thing in common, the DH position. As we broke down earlier today, everything you need to know about what looks like currently the Mets' internal option for the DH heading into the season. And Mark Vientos, what has Marky V done so far in his career? How does he project in 2024? And if he is truly the Mets' main option at DH for this upcoming season, is this the right or wrong move by the organization and ultimately how this could be a make or break year for Mark Vientos and the Mets organization in certain ways. Make sure to check that out after watching this one again. But now we're talking about external options as the Mets have once again been linked to one of the biggest bats out there and JD Martinez. So we'll be breaking down everything you need to know as to where these reports came from, how credible they are or not credible, everything to know about JD Martinez, the likelihood, unlikelihood of him landing in Queens and so much more. But before I do all that, make sure you stay all the way till the end of the video as i have a very exciting announcement to share with you all that's very relevant and two make sure to smash that like and subscribe on as it is the easiest and best way to support the channel thank you all so much in advance and thirdly thank you all so much again for hearing from today's video sponsor our great friends at bet us if you don't know bet us they have you covered with all your sports book betting needs again i'm talking overs unders money lines parlays they have you covered with the nfl super bowl right around the corner and you're trying to get in on the action today check out my friends here at NFL Picks and Predictions Bet US YouTube channel as they give you the best best analysis and the best picks possible for the upcoming big game. But if, say you just like to do not necessarily Super Bowl bets, but you want to focus on NHL, NBA, or maybe you want to wait until MLB regular season again. I bet us has you covered with all the best lines as they are safe, secure, and reliable. So click the link down below as you will get 125% boost, not only with your first deposit, but your first three deposits as long as you use the discount code JOIN125, J-O-I-N-125 for 125% boost with your first three deposits. And once more, shout out again to bet us for being a great sponsor on the channel. But guys and gals, I want to know your reactions to the news that yes, the Mets are connected to JD Martinez but let's take th things a step further where exactly does this stem from this came out just over the past hour at the time of recording this from Mike Puma of the New York Post stated the following yes the, there's been dialogue between JD Martinez's camp and the Mets of spring training approaches proven offensive pieces are still available in the buyer's market and price is right just maybe the Mets will bite I like the word play there by Puma too I gotta be honest and truthfully I love the prospect of bringing in JD Martinez we have been told time and time again the Mets would still like to add a bat, but they don't want to add a bat at the prices they're going for. They can add a short-term option at a price that's more team-friendly. They will have interest in doing so. Oh, the Mets like J.D. Martinez. Oh, they're not going to land J.D. Martinez. Oh, the Mets really like this guy, but they're not going to land this guy. It's been a frustrating offseason for many fans, and I completely understand that. And the lack of you know consistency in the coverage has certainly not helped, and in certain ways myself too. Not that I'm doing anything wrong, but even though I'm just breaking down the latest news and rumors and reports unfortunately a lot of what the Mets have been connected to versus what they've actually landed are two drastically different things so far this offseason so I understand the frustration to all the fans out there that are under the belief saying hey until proven otherwise they're done making their moves but I also didn't expect the Mets to make another bullpen move after Jake Diekman and here they go and get Shintaro Fujinami a day later so who knows and what I do know again is that JD Martinez is one of the best power bats available in this market is one of the best power bats in Major League Baseball period and if you can somehow some way sway him enough at this point in his career after winning a championship already again looking for probably another multi-year deal even though hopefully the Mets just want him on a one-year deal you know he doesn't have the best odds to win with the Mets versus some other clubs but the Mets might find themselves actually in a good position knowing that this isn't a large market to acquire DHs I mean JD is very limited in his market in general because he is strictly a DH bat the guy can't even confidently comfortably give you consistent for first base reps where you know you're going to get at least solid if not mediocre production out of the position so JDM's lack of defensive ability actually might fall in the Mets favor here as they look to acquire a bat this offseason so for those that don't know a little bit about JD Martinez as I said he is one of the best bats out there he had a tremendous season in his one and likely only year with the LA Dodgers 33 home runs 103 RBIs I flip flop the stats there don't mind the stat bar being incorrect you know just a, another day that ends in a Y where I have an error here as I do my uh, my typical graphics 113 games played 61 runs scored a 271 321 572 clip over two war a 135 
five WRC plus, which means he's 35% better than the average batter in baseball. And last season, he had an OPS just under, uh, we saw there just under 900. And against lefties, he had an OPS right around 1,000. This guy rakes against lefties, something this Mets team can desperately utilize as a team led by Pete Alonso and others cannot hit a lick against Southpaws on a consistent basis whatsoever. You're bringing in a proven winner who knows what it takes to win would be a tremendous get not only for the on-field product, but the clubhouse as well. And when looking at his numbers through Baseball Savant, and I've referenced him multiple times, and I'm going to do it again because as long as the Mets are connected to this man, I need to reference these numbers because they are a thing of beauty. 93rd percentile in buying run value per Baseball Savant, 91 in XWOBA, 77 in expected buying average, 96 in expected slugging, 98 in average exit velocity, 98 in barrel percentage, 98 in hard hit percentage, 97 in sweet spot percentage. Where you can catch him is on the whip percentage, K percentage, the chase percentage, and the walk percentage is 35%. So honestly, it could be much worse for a slugger like JDM. So again, he swings and misses at a good clip. However, he gets on base at a very solid clip. We saw, you know, not nothing overwhelming, not Brandon Nimmo level, but at least can give you, you know, hopefully 315, 320 plus range. And the power is there. Something that he struggled with in 2022, dealing with back ailments. Billy Apple and the Mets tried desperately to acquire him at that traded line. The Red Sox were asking for a Kane's ransom. They held on to him. He stayed with Boston for the rest of the year. Goes to LA for 2023. Finds his game again. Heals up a little bit. And now he's looking to have another big year in 2024. Again, a timeless hitter. One of the best true power hitters in the game today. And there's no denying that by adding a lock of a home run bat like JDM to this Mets lineup can automatically make them truly a wild card type club. Right now, they're fringe. They're actually projecting to be a wild card team at the time of recording this. But if you add J.D. Martinez, the guaranteed offensive power you get can easily propel this club, in my opinion, to certainly being more of a lock of a buyer versus a seller by the MLB trade deadline. And the beauty of it is that if you do bring in someone like J.D.M. on a short term deal and say you do falter and unfortunately are very much a seller by the deadline somehow, you can trade away an asset like himself, hopefully for some premium pieces of teams really looking to go all in by the deadline. Again, that's in the scenario, worst scenario where we have 2023 all over again in 2020. 24 for the Mets, but it's still something to keep in mind when evaluating. And once more, this is a guy that not only knows what it takes to win, but he has the power. And I'm not even going with the expectation that JD would have the same numbers as he did in 2023. Even if he drops off to say 25 home runs, 80 RBIs, 800 OPS instead of around a 900, even a 775 in that range, I'm still taking that production at DH every single day of the week for the Mets here. But the question is, is short term JDM? worthwhile more than seeing what you have in Mark Vientos throughout the entirety of the year. Because if there is one huge advocate thing in regards to Vientos that I agree with, that I discussed in my video earlier today, even though I still want the Mets to add a bat externally, if there's any time to see what you have in Mark Vientos consistently, given daily reps, now is the time to do it. 2025 is likely not the time to do it, as you're going to have World Series aspirations. At least that is what the goal is at this point in time. So something to certainly evaluate if you're the Mets and if you're us fans here, one figuring out what makes most sense. And I think David Stearns has been trying to go about that fine line very well all offseason long. But if you can get him at the right price, this is, again, a MVP caliber bat when he is at his absolute best. Not expecting that to be the case here with the Mets. Just expecting the guy to be his typical prototypical self. Even if he was going back to the numbers in 2022, that is still plenty production at the position for the Mets here. But the big question is, is a short-term option at JDM really worthwhile versus seeing what you have in Mark Vientos, who has all the power, the ability, but it's about putting those tools together. Can he do it? Should the Mets consider that, or should they go all in on JDM if they can get him at the right price? That is something that I guess we'll soon find out, along with, of course, JD's interest or lack thereof in coming to Queens, because I've always been a proponent of believing that I'd be surprised if he came here, more so his lack of interest versus the Mets' lack of interest in him. But anyways, that is what I'll leave you with, folks, but the big news the big announcement that i'm so excited to share with you all tomorrow february 7th 2 p.m eastern barring any changes i will be breaking down the mets bullpen for the 2024 season along with the man who got this channel started the first ever video i did on the channel was yes 
Trevor May as he signed with the Mets back in 2020. Fast forward a couple years later, and Trevor May will be joining me, breaking down this Mets bullpen along with some relievers that he, of course, knows very well as former teammates. And just being a part of the game, we're going to break down more about Trevor May and not only his experience in the league, what it's been like since retirement, but ultimately, how does this bullpen shape up in his eyes heading into the 2024 season? So very excited for that conversation. Stay tuned for it. Make sure you do not miss out on the live show tomorrow again at the time of recording this until then have a great rest of your night day evening whenever you're watching this this is your boy warty signing out let's go mets baby peace